Hey everybody, Alex from seemsgoodmagic.com here, back doing a best of three Outlaws of Thunder Junction draft. We've got Overwhelming Forces, eight mana, destroy all creatures, target opponent controls, draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. All right, well, that's cool. Archmage is new, two mana, two, two. When it deals combat damage to a player, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard, gains flashback until in turn. The flashback costs equal to its mana cost. That card gains flashback zero until end of turn. Instead, if Archmage is new, is saddled. Well, that's cool. I like that a lot. Um, and then we've got Scales from Summoner, 3 mana, 3, 3. This is the one that makes a dinosaur if you control a bigger creature. 2 mana, 3, 2, Trample. When it's plotted, it, a creature gets plus 3, plus 2, and gains Trample until, until end of turn. That's cool. This makes... Uh, there's so many good cards in this set. Um, this, I mean, blowing up all your opponent's creatures is good. 8 mana is a lot, but I suspect that is a strong effect. I'm kind of tempted to take this Newt, though. This is pretty sweet. Basically, you have to deal combat damage to a player, I suppose. I'm just going to take the big eight splash, eight flashy mana thing, because that's just so ridiculously strong, potentially. If we don't end up playing, it's okay. It probably only works if you have some ramp element. So maybe not. Uh, might not work out, because you also don't want to play ramp creatures. Well, no, it's just one-sided, so you totally can. So maybe this is like a green-black card, but let's see what Calamity Galloping Inferno does. Six mana, four, six haste. When it attacks, while saddled, choose a non-legendary creature that saddled it. Create a tapped and attacking copy. That's a copy of it. Sacrifice that token. To repeat this process once. Wow. That seems really awesome. Uh, Yeah repeat it once too so you get two copies of them or am i misunderstanding <laughs> repeat this process once wow okay well that, that seems sweet um yeah wow uh desperado three mana two four whenever you commit a crime you mill them that's cool for mill deck i mean murder is obviously good but i would take a rare card over murder nowadays creatures uh, i didn't even get a chance to read everything i was so surprised by that one Pitiless Carnage, four mana, sacrifice any number of permanents you control, then draw that many cards. You know, it's it's probably playable, but I don't think I want to take it here. Take for a ride. It's flash. So you can flash steal a creature. Wow. That's actually really strong. Um, so if you target them with something else, and then they attack you, say, on their turn, you can steal their creature at instant speed, block their biggest creature. Basically, you can kill their two biggest creatures. Or it's just an act of treason, which is still pretty good. Uh, we have Bandit's Hall, which does actually ramp and let us get this stuff a little bit quicker. That might be a correct pick here. Um, this one is 3 mana, 3-3, three, three, when it attacks while saddled. Okay, so you can return stuff to your hand. Rooftop Assassin is good. I think I'm actually going to take this because if we're... I mean, I could take Removal too, but... And Bandit's Hall is not that amazing, but I feel like if I'm legitimately going to play these big, fat fatties, I'm probably going to need some ramp. Uh, Lockpicker, 3 mana, 2, 3. When it enters, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until in turn. Flashback costs equal to its mana cost. Okay. Hellsper Brute, 5 mana, 5, 4. Affinity for Outlaws. That's cool, actually. If you got some good Outlaws, this is quite a bit cheaper. Baron Birch from Greywater, 4 mana, 3, 4. And then when you get tokens, you get 1-1, one, one, um, and it only triggers once a turn. But you can also sack creatures and draw cards or artifacts. This is a discard effect. Um, this is a removal spell. Could do the Desert's do just take a cheap removal spell, since we already have a couple pretty impressive fatties. Um, and feel probably pretty decent about it, because at worst it's minus two, minus two, and I suspect we'll probably get a desert or two. We'll see. Smuggler Surprise. So this lets you mill and get creatures from the mill cards into your hand, put creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield, and make your creatures with you control with power four or greater gain hexproof and indestructible. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Um, I do like that. Abrupt Decay in green, black, just blow stuff up, which is nice. Uh, binding negotiation is okay. Ankle biter, kind of just blocker that buys time. This gets you stuff back. Um, this card's actually pretty good too. It's a blocker that lets you draw an extra card. I could see possibly taking the the plunderer here. Um, I think I will just because it's a relatively cheap creature with kind of a good upside. I like that it kind of replaces itself. Skullduggery is legitimately 
pretty good removal. I actually like this. I mean, you can get serious two for ones out of this one mana common. Discerning Peddler, this lets you rummage, which is not bad ever. Um, if you're looking for land or you're getting flooded, it can be quite good. And there's requisition rate as well. I might actually take the Peddler over the Skullduggery. I do like Skullduggery quite a bit, but given that we already have some expensive dudes, I'm just thinking if we're not playing stuff that's ramping us, then we should probably be playing stuff that replaces, uh, you know, loots, rummages, whatever. Oh, that's a cool one. Tarkuj can't block this turn. Well, could take the Gulch here, actually. Let me see what the Pulverizer does again. Reach is actually pretty good. But I think I... Let's see what the Silver Deputy does. Oh, Search your Library for Basic. Oh, it just puts it on top, though. Okay. Well, that is less good. Putting it on top is... It's not terrible, but it is less good. I think I'm actually going to take the Desert here. Makes Deserts do better and really opens me up for some potential green splashing for Ramp to make this Calamity and Overwhelming Forces quite a bit better. Decisive Denial. So you can make something fight and you can counter non-creature spells. It's actually nice versatility there. We can get a lifelinker, which is not bad. Um, Gardener ramps, I, I may want this one. I don't think it's amazing and it's a little bit clunky, but comes in, gains life, which is good, and lets you ramp and fix. I do like that. It seems good when you have a card like Overwhelming Forces or Calamity, so I think we'll go with that for now. Uh, locomotive is a reasonable way to ramp, actually, I think. Otherwise, so is Gold Pan. It's a one-time ramp, but it kind of does it. Or we could take another Peddler. Otherwise, there's Thunder Thief and Harrier Strix, which are both playable blue cards as well. I think I'm going to go with the Locomotive. Locomotive's only good, though, if you... I mean, if I'm reading the card correctly, you can crew it with a bunch of dudes um, and get a bunch of treasure. Unless I'm misreading it, but I think I'm reading it right. Return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Create a mercenary. Okay. Um, draw a card, create a treasure. That's oh, a decent blocker, too. Um, could take a second gardener. I think I agree with that. Okay. So, Pigless Carnage came back. I don't think I need it. Could take Take for a Ride, but the question is, do I have... I mean, we have one desert, that's a commit a crime, but we don't have a lot of other commit a crime. Whereas Rooftop Assassin is actually just pretty good. I like Rooftop Assassin quite a bit. You can chump block and then... Actually, I'm going to take the Pyromancer. And the reason I'm taking Pyromancer is um, it can be potentially ramp, especially if you plot like with uh, Highway Robbery. And we just seem like we're kind of a mana heavy deck, to be honest. But we'll see. Maybe it's not as good as I think. Wow. And you just take reanimate? Yeah, I think, I mean, <laughs> this card hasn't been printed in a long time. And that is real strong. Uh, basically, you could go turn two, discerning peddler, discard calamity, turn three, reanimate calamity for six life and get a four six haste with upside. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I think we're going to take that. There's a reason they don't print effects like this anymore. It's really strong. And not to mention you can get it on from any graveyard. So really good. See if we wheel another assassin. Explosive derailment is pretty good too. Three mana, four damage to a creature at instant speed is, is hard to hard to argue, but um, there's just no way that I, I don't take reanimate here. We can read some of the other cards though. Riku of many paths. Whenever you cast a modal spell, choose up to X, where X is the number of times you, choo you chose a mode for that spell. And then exile top card or library until the next turn you can play it. Couldn't even read that. These cards, cards nowadays have so much text on them that I can't even read it. Railway Brawler, five mana, five five, reach trample. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, put X plus one plus one counters out where X is its power. This card is ridiculous. We're gonna take it over Bedevil, even though Bedevil is obviously awesome removal. That's on color. I am just gonna go ahead and splash this card with our two gardeners, our gulch, any treasures that we potentially get. That just seems absurdly strong. And I wanted to go deeper in green anyway, just for ramp effects, but we'll see. Uh, Honest Rutstein's great too. Uh, let's see what this Ruckus does. Plus one, plus one, Menace and Trample, and you get to draw when it leaves the battlefield. This is the Mercenary Maker. This allows you to maybe get some more treasures. 
Um, Commando is obviously good, but yep, we're just going to go ahead and take the Mythic. Journey to Nowhere is some good removal, however. We're already in quite a few colors, so I don't know about that. Creature cards in your graveyard, and you get some Varmints. Okay, another Mourner Surprise. Dance of the Tumbleweeds lets us actually ramp, so I think we'll take that. And if you have enough mana, you also get a big fat fatty. So this card's actually pretty good for us. Um, it is green, however. Uh, but I kind of don't mind going deeper green. Maybe splashing black. Although, well, you can still splash Overwhelming Forces even if it is double black. That's probably still fine. I guess I'm going to want to make my mana base quite a bit better. But Dance of the Tumbleweeds helps with that. Pillage the Bog. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is twice the number of lanes you control. Put one of them in your hand, the rest on the bottom. That's that's pretty good for two mana. I like that. Uh, courtyard, not a desert. Mirage Mesa is, and it lets you splash, which is actually kind of nice. Um, I still like the Entertainer. This is a fight card, which is good. This Pillage the Bog actually seems pretty good to me. I mean, you can find your bomb in the late game or early game maybe find an extra land you need you can also plot it and play it late i don't know i think it's good we're gonna try it i may have actually needed that desert but we'll find out uh clear shot target creature control gets plus one plus one it deals damage equal to its power target creature you don't control well that's pretty good one-sided removal patient naturalist either lets you not ramp but find land or create a treasure token it does randomly work well with reanimate since it puts stuff in your graveyard and it lets you ramp and fix, so I kind of like it. But I could use some removal as well. Because um, I, well, we have eight creatures. I'm going to go with the clear shot because it's one sided removal and we don't really have that much removal right now, so I think it's worth it. So another tumbleweed. Wait, this one's different than the other dance of the tumbleweeds, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. So I could take the possum now, three mana, three, three is not bad. Getting Returning creatures that saddled it, if you want, um, is good with enter the battlefield effects like with Peddler. I'm not in love with it, but I think we'll consider it. it does kind of seem like green's open. So we could randomly take just a desert, but it's just in red for us, which isn't amazing. Rictus Robber comes in. And makes a potentially makes a 2 2 blue and black zombie if something died. Or we could take the buzzard if something died too. Um, maybe take the deputy here just to make sure I can fix for this deck. I don't love this card, but it is probably playable. Rakish crew enters, create a mercenary, and whenever an outlaw you control dies, you drain. It's like it's kind of cool actually, but. Treasure Dredger might actually be the pick. There's also Ambush Gigapede. Um, Dredger just kind of fixes though, but... Uh, oh, actually, this is like a little mini board wipe. I think I'm glad that it showed me this because this is a pretty important one, potentially. Um, Riku of Mini Paths came back. I think we can take another Assassin. Or a Sentry, which is a 2-mana 3-3 three, three Defender. And then it kind of, well, let's just take the Assassin. I think the Flying and the Life Link's pretty important. Mourner Surprise, we'll just take it. It's, it's fine. We have some strong cards to get back. I don't know if we'll need to play it, but it's something. Uh, Rise of the Varmints, we might just take now. Probably don't have enough creature cards to really want to play it yet, but that's okay. I guess I'll just take the Courtyard in case there's a white card I want to splash. Um... We're not in white, so I don't know if it matters which one of these I take. Yeah, it seems like white's open, but we're not switching to that. Uh, oh, this lets you proliferate, which is kind of cool. Kind of expensive, but um, it's cool. Servant of the Stinger is pretty sweet in here, actually. Uh, otherwise, we could take more deserts that let us fix. And Thunder Salvo is some, some removal. Usually just two mana, two damage, however. But serving the Stinger, I mean, being a Death Touch 1-3, this really holds down the Fort well and has really nice ability on top of that. I mean, can you imagine late game finding overwhelming forces? I mean, I think we just want that. Claim Jumper is actually cool. Let's you find a bunch of lands, potentially. 
deals damage to that player equal to the number of non-creature spells they've cast this turn. And it's a 2 mana 1-4. I mean, that's a weird body in general, too. But we're going to take Servant and the Stinger. I mean, now we almost don't seem like we're red that much. More green-black. But, oh, we just passed randomly a lost GTA. This card is so good. Uh, let's you... Removing charge counters lets you ramp, which we love. Make a creature can't block, which is obviously good, or permanently buff an equipped creature. So, yeah, we're going to take Lost GT. Tiny Bones jo uh, joins up, is only okay. Uh, Dust Bowl. Okay. I mean, probably don't need it in Limited. This is more for the cast multiple spells a turn deck. Uh, we could take Honest Rutstein, which is a great card, but I'm obviously not taking it over Lost GT, so. All right, Heartless Pillage lets you make your opponent discard. I think we might just take Jagged Barons. There is some more removal we could get, but we're already at a point where we need to make cut, uh, need to make cuts, and getting more desert seems good. That's good too. I mean, there's a lot of good cards, but I want the fixing in the deserts. Like hard removal would be nice. This is a little pricey, but I'm gonna take the Barons. We're gonna try and make this these colors work. Commandeer lets you steal something. That's obviously good. This desert. Can only do it to cast mounts. We don't have enough mounts to do that. Take another peddler. Probably just take consuming ashes now. Get another removal spell. Double black is actually a little problematic. Um, in a three color deck, but I think that's all right. Kambala is a cool card. I actually like it, but I'm gonna take consuming ashes. Just get some removal because our creature count is starting to get there. Um. Boombox is kind of expensive. Maybe just another Dance of the Tumbleweeds. Some more fixing ramp late game creature stuff. Hopefully we're staying busy enough early. I think we are. Savage Smash is pretty good. It's another removal spell. Quick Draw. Oh, that's kind of cool. Quill Charger, we saw that already. Insatiable Avarice. All right, this lets us find a card Okay, that's kind of cool, actually. This Marauder is actually really good. I like this card. I feel like you get a lot of value out of this Marauder. This card is good, too. It lets you find stuff, but... That Marauder is... I was really impressed with it in the last draft. And we have a good amount of ramp already. Ferocification. So, probably don't need this. Although, yeah, it's kind of cool, actually. But not probably not for the archetype we're doing. Nor is Boneyard Desecrator. Um, I'm going to just take the cheap green blocker because right now we're kind of looking like a more of a late game deck. This surveils two. We don't have enough mounts. A beaver, four mana, four, four vigilance. It's really not bad. Um, otherwise I could take highway robbery, but I kind of feel like we're focused on green black at this point. So the Contagion Engine came back, kind of expensive. Could take the Ankle Biter, could take Skullduggery. Um, I think I'm actually going to take the Death Toucher just to buy some time. I still can play red too, I feel like. I think. Some more removal. I'm going to actually take another Ankle Biter. Um, Sentinel. Maybe like a blocker. Common to hear. Varmint. I mean, Varmint's pretty good. Tough to go wrong with blow up artifacts enchantments. Boombox. Maybe a good sideboard card. If I need to deal with something. All right. So. That was quite the draft. I mean, we kind of started with our finishers and worked our way from there so we have all this like three mana ramp which is a little bit awkward but we have enough cheap stuff i think we're actually okay and i think we have enough fixing to pretty comfortably i don't think we need the extra tap land basically all that does in this deck it doesn't really do much except make deserts do slightly better so i don't know if i need to play a tap land just for that reason because i don't think i have any other desert value things I might just dump Rise of the Varmints. I have to make a lot of cuts here. Um, yeah, and I'm at 17 lands. Um, 
can probably dip back on red. I might just cut caught in the crossfire because double red's going to be a problem. I mean, obviously I'm still playing Calamity just because creating tapped and attacking tokens that are copies of your... Um, especially with Enter the Battlefield effects and stuff. But yeah, you can do some pretty nasty stuff with that. I think Pyromancer's... Pyromancer might actually be a little awkward in here now that I think about it. Maybe that's maybe this isn't the right archetype for it. It is. It's still pretty good. It just makes your first spell you cast, you know, too cheaper or whatever, sort of, which isn't bad. I kind of still want to keep Pillage the Bog. This is like a three drop at least most of the time, and we're playing the Gardeners as well, and we have Bandits all. So we have like five three mana Rampers. It is a lot. Um, maybe Sentinel's okay. Cash out uh, lands for, I mean, it still gives you one time. It fixes, it lets you draw. You still get some use out of that land. Might be worth it. We'll have to see. Well, I've got to make a lot of cuts. So I think we'll cut the Rise of the Varmints just because I don't think this is, it's not like we're a self-mill plan thing. I want to keep the Marauder. I want to keep Calamity. We'll, we'll, we're going to, I mean, we have all this ramp. We got to play Overwhelming Forces. Uh, could cut the Locomotive. It does create treasures. I just, I don't think that we need it. We're doing better things. I forgot we have this Railway Brawler too, which is just incredibly strong. We have a lot of removal in here, which is good. And we actually ended up with a lot of cheap creatures to make, like turn one Ankle Biter, turn two Lost Gta Equip, Attack of Ankle Biter. That's pretty strong, as it turns out. Let's you ramp, let's you uh, pump, equip creature, get rid of blockers. I mean, that that's a lot. That is a lot. So it says we have 19 creatures. So we can cut some creatures. The sentry is, is only good because it buys us some time. We probably don't need it. Um, I might dump highway robbery. Not that I dislike it, it's just... Probably want to minimize red in here. Like, honestly, I could dump almost all the red except Calamity and probably still cast Calamity pretty easily off of two Gardeners, Jagged Barons, the Mountains, Silver Deputy, um, Bandits Hall, Sentinel. Did I have more? Um, how many? Does that cut a lot of my... I think Surprise is actually still fine in here with Lost GTA. I could be wrong, but it seems fine to me. Um, yeah, we can find our desert off of that, which is cool. I don't think this card is amazing, but if you're short on lands, it can be good. The Plunder is still fine. Possum I don't love, but... Maybe we cut the Pyromancer. So then I'm basically just running Calamity. So how good is Calamity? I have to wonder that too. Because it has haste, so then you saddle it right away. It's saddled, it attacks. Um, whatever you saddled it with, you basically get two copies of, tapping and attacking. Is that? Am I reading this right? I think I am. And with like, imagine this with like Hollow Marauder. You're creating two tapped copies of this. They discard two cards and you potentially draw two cards. I mean, that is really strong. If I dump the uh, Peddler, I guess Reanimate gets slightly weaker. It really doesn't matter, though. Reanimate is just so good regardless. Unfortunately, Consuming Ashes does not have good synergy with Reanimate. But Deserts do. We have some other removal in here as well and having three cheap death touchers is actually really nice um do i need all of this ramp i mean we're playing an eight drop so possibly especially if i have to make three more cuts if i was going to cut any of them it's probably bandits hall although i could cut the i could cut the sentinel this two four is actually a decent body for three and it is one of our few ways to cast calamity out it almost makes me wonder if i need it I need all these three drop ramp spells for that reason. Although it does seem like a, dot, a lot, doesn't it? Two, three, four, five, six, sort of. This doesn't really ramp, I guess, either, but it blocks well. 
I might cut the haul. We don't have a ton of ways to commit crimes that I'm seeing. I guess this can commit crimes by targeting creatures and stuff. But I feel like we can cut that and probably still be just fine. Um, and I still need to make two more cuts and potentially could be a creature. We don't have to run 15 in this deck, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure what we're cutting now. Um, very, very odd deck. You know, honestly, these are creatures too. They really are. You pay five mana and I mean, you pay five mana, you're getting an elemental. So probably, you know, getting a four, four, I mean, it's, it's growing too. You have to remember that. Or maybe it's not growing. Create an XX green elemental. No, I guess it's, it's one time. It's whatever it is when you cast it. Sometimes that confuses me. If it read, create a green XX green elemental where, um, yeah, I, so there, there's other things that like change power and toughness over time. I think this is just whatever you have when you cast it, which makes more sense. Railway Brawler is so strong. That's just going to put games away, especially with this three-mana ramp. That almost makes me wonder if I should actually jam the uh, Bandit's Hall. Just the fact that getting to Brawler on turn four, having a turn four, five-five Breach Trample. I mean, I guess you can plot it on turn four, too, because the card is just so ridiculously strong. And then turn five, you do it, cast Creature, and yet, yeah, that's, that, you almost want to plot this. That's the funny thing. I'm I'm playing the beaver just because it's super big. I mean, it's just efficient with vigilance too. It's just really nice. I'm not 100% sure what I'm cutting here to be honest. I don't want to cut my flyer cuz it's like my only flyer. I guess Marauder's flyer too. Um clear shot's good removal. Hmm. This is actually kind of tricky. I could cut the Mourner's surprise, but we have Amazing creatures to get back. Like, getting Brawler back is just too important. I'd almost rather cut something else. Rather, if I'm going to cut something that's also a creature. Like, what are the weakest creatures in my deck? I could cut the Rambling Possum. This, this, It's good with Enter the Battlefield effects, but... The only Enter the Battlefield effects I'm really looking at are, like... I guess Hollow Marauder. I mean, I think we can comfortably cut Rambling Possum and probably still be okay and remember this is also kind of a creature at five mana too so i'm really not too worried about being at 14 creatures like i can even cut another creature and still be pretty good i think um weakest card in my deck that is the biggest question and the reason i want to keep the silver deputy is basically because it fixes and makes hands with less lands more keepable just lets me fix for red too alongside the gardeners and the dance of the tumbleweeds and all that yeah hmm this has flash too right yeah that's nice weakest creature to cut that is the question i want to keep my cheap death touchers i want to keep my two drops I kind of want to keep my flyer. I could cut the plunder. I, I like this card, especially since... I was going to say we look like a deck that can get flooded, but the truth is we have this, which is a little bit of flood mit mitigation, actually, because it doubles as a creature. I might just cut the plunder. I, I don't... I actually like plunder, and it's I think it's a good card, but we're just doing so much good things here. I kind of just feel like running it like this. This is quite the deck. What's our, uh, so we're dead even on green and black and then just the one red spell, but it is double red just to make problems for myself, but that's okay. We have the mountain, the barons, we have the garden, the sentinel, dance, um, deputy, a lot of ways to fix. Even lost GTA, remove a counter, you get two red out of it. So um, I think we'll be able to cast Calamity. This is kind of a crazy deck. All right, well, we're gonna give this a try. Um, and see you round one. I suppose I should have looked at the colors of the mana base here. We've got six, seven, eight black, seven, eight green, and three red. Yeah, that, I mean, honestly, that seems like a decent mana base to me. All right. See you round one. All right, round one we'll play first. 
Yeah, it's a keep. Good hand. We have all three colors. You got two drop, three drop, four drop. I like it. Alright, that can actually ramp us, so I think I might do that instead of the Sentinel. Particularly since I don't need the Sentinel right now. Otherwise I'd have to wait to get to 6 mana to do this. Right? Yeah, let's get the ramp going. I mean, we've got, we've got some beef in here, so... Let's just get our uh, Jagged Barons. That way we have our double red. Get a giant beaver next turn, at worst. And then Sentinel can start cashing some of these out, so what does this do? Oh, we get a mercenary. Wait. Why are you attacking with that? This doesn't have haste, does it? No? All right. Alright, well, that was a terrible attack, but we'll take it. I think they just misclicked or something. We could blow up Roundup if I wanted. Um, I'm okay leaving it alone. Ankle biter, all right, well. So I can only saddle as a sorcery, that's good to know. Let's, uh, let's go sentinel, biter. Saddle here. Put a counter on our biter. Kind of a cool card. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. Top card of your library has plot. The plot costs equal to its mana cost. You may plot non-land cards from the top of your library. Wow, that's cool. It works well with uh, Brimstone Roundup to get more mercenaries. Can always blow up Brimstone Roundup. Keep that in mind. It's important to note. All right, Gardner for more ramps, so we can use Sentinel, play Gardner. I think we'll just go land, get in with these two. We'll do the Sentinel first. Uh, we can sack a forest. Draw, get a treasure. Deserts do. So, yeah, I think we actually, we do actually kill, how much the ward on that, two? Um, I guess it prevents me from playing Gardener. I don't know if that really matters. I just want to kill this because 
they get extra spells. I mean, that's really good, actually. Getting free spells off the top of your deck, plot-wise, is pretty strong. So they don't even want to mess with it, and we didn't even have to play any of our... We didn't play Brawler, we didn't play Calamity, we didn't play Overwhelming Forces. Um, I guess it's debatable. I was going to say how good Overwhelming Forces is going to be this game, but I still think it's it's got to be worth it. If we can get enough ramp going. So what did they show us removal-wise? They showed us Metamorphic Blast. That's good to know about. Yeah, we didn't show them any of our actual, like, straight-up bombs. Is there anything that's weak against them? I mean, even Consuming Ashes, even if it's pricey. Yeah, I could see that being a little worse. But what are we bringing in, too? That's another question. Do I want more ramp? Do I want Sentry to block stuff on the ground? I don't know if I love that. I was surprised to see Red Rock Sentinel actually do something. That was interesting. Yeah, to be honest, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what I'm supposed to bring in. I, I mean, Death Touchers look slightly worse against, you know, one, two first strikers with haste as well as mercenaries. So I don't love that. But when you're running Lost Gta, it still seems pretty good. We also don't know what other creatures they're running. I think it's probably worth it to keep it around. I don't love the idea of trading this with a mercenary, though. I can't really bring in peddlers unless I'm that confident I can get red at a reasonable point. It could do the bolt plunder, but that's still not very good against mercenaries. Caught in the crossfire would let me blow up a lot of things, but I need double red for that. But it is actually pretty good. Can blow up this. Um, are pirates consider outlaws? Or <laughs> I don't have all the outlaws. Oh, pirates are outlaws. Okay. I mean, it makes sense that they would be outlaws. A pirate is an outlaw. Let's just run it back. I mean, it worked um, until I see some evidence that I need to sideboard. We should probably just keep the way it is. He sees all this red mana and we didn't play a single red spell. This is pretty clunky, but I think I'm going to keep. It's tough to go wrong when you have all three colors. It's just obviously slightly worse when you've got a bit of an awkward hand like this. But I think it's worth keeping. All right, no plays. That's good. And then we get to ramp and get our second red mana. So that's cool. Turn three, you get to do this. And we'll have access to turn four, ashes, turn five, uh, calamity. Oh, that was a great draw. So now we can do... Oh, well, we're still doing Dance of the Tumbleweeds here for the double red. So let's get the barons. Next turn, I can do Servant, and I can Saddle it, too. I need to commit crimes, I guess, but... Okay. That's cool. That was good synergy. I like it. Rooftop Assassin, obviously not bad. So at five mana, we can do the Assassin kind of like that to get the lifelinker on board there's actual chance they attack with their mercenary too and it's better use of mana than just casting the servant to the stinger um so let's go land pass and we'll leave up consuming ashes and rooftop assassin they may attack with their mercenary here Ooh. Well, at the very least, I can kill the lackey, potentially. Maybe not. Oh, they wisely, wisely did that, huh? Okay. Well, we're going to take it, and then we're going to cast Rooftop Assassin. And then we get to do Calamity. Wow, that's cool, too. Chite as well. All right, so we go land, we go Calamity. Saddle, attack. T 
attack and we make two copies of it. Yeah. So we get him for four air lifelink, which is obviously amazing. Servant to the Singer, a little bit less sexy just for copy effects with Calamity, but obviously Rooftop Assassin was a really good one. And we do have three blacks, so we can do Ashes plus Servant next turn. In fact, we can even cast GTA, but I kind of want to equip GTA on uh, Calamity here. That's pretty strong. Making stuff, I mean, we'll see. I can't believe how few lands they've played this game. It's actually incredible. We've been like just landing out here. Ooh, discarding the Savage Smash, huh? All right. They look like they're playing a kill spell here, huh? All right. That makes sense. More mercenaries. Well, yeah, I think we can bring in the board wave spell at least. That's cool. Okay. So I think we go Servant, Varmint, and they can give plus five plus zero, so they can actually make the Lackey pretty strong here, huh? With all that first strike. Um, let's do Jite, Equip, Attack with Calamity. I don't think they can kill me yet, so this is probably okay. So I don't think they can. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I mean, it's not lethal yet, but. Oh, I didn't saddle, did I? Um, that's all right. We'll chill. I'm gonna wait on it. Oh, that's a weird one to choose actually. I would have done the lackey. Wait, what are they doing? Guess I should have should have put the GTA on a whatever else I'm blocking with here. Would have made more sense. Oh, it's got trample. I see. Well, that makes more sense then. Um. Okay. Village of Bog. Well, that seems pretty good. And I can still cast Consuming Ashes, so. Well, Brawler it is. Make two more copies of it. With, oh my god, that's so good. <laughs> god, that is so strong.
Wow. Wowzers. All right. We'll see you for the next one. Well, man is good. We got a two drop. We got a four drop, I guess, but that's okay. This will do. Calamity's fun. Somehow managed to not have difficulty getting double red in two games, too, which is nice. All right. Well, fight card, not, not the worst. Guess I'm pretty willing to trade a varmint when you have a mourner's surprise in hand, too. And we got our ramp just at the right time here, so we can get our second red for Calamity. Still going to be a couple mana away from it, but... Being of your insip, if you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn, Vintive Wingsmith doesn't have a flying counter on it, put a flying counter on it. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's all right. We'll, uh... Do the dance here, get our second red, get a desert with the uh, barons, I think. No attacks. So I'm much more willing to attack with a varmint when I can play a rooftop assassin next turn. Fairy dog. You haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it. If you would put one or more plus one plus one counters to creature control, put that many plus one. Wow, that's cool. Alright. So ankle biter's cool, but we're doing assassin this turn, so we'll just do the gulch. Although I could do I don't have double green yet, otherwise I could do ankle biter plus clear shot, but that's alright. We'll attack. I doubt they block. And then we'll pass, leave up Assassin. Might just block with Varmint to kill something here. Just because I'm willing to trade a Varmint for a Wingsmith now. Just to get full value out of this Assassin. And then if I draw untapped land, I have Calamity double copying a Rooftop Assassin with the Saddle to get in for four Flying Lifelink. Which seems pretty good. Guess they could counter this, but um, I'm going to allow it. I mean, another thing is if they do counter this rooftop assassin, they don't get to do all the nasty stuff with their card. All right, so we have Gardener now, which is probably just worth it. I could get the Varmint back, probably not worth it. I think we'll just do... Yeah, Gardener plus probably Ankle Biter here, I think is pretty good. Then next turn we've got Calamity, copying Rooftop Assassin. It can copy the Gardener too, which is kind of funny, to gain four life and have a double Ramper. Like a two ramp instead of one, but I don't know if I need that. Especially if they end up having an answer for uh, take two. So we've got sixth land now plus the gardener. I don't know if that actually matters though. So let's do calamity. And we'll still just do the assassin saddle here. I mean, copying gardener by saddling doesn't give me enough to do clear shot, it just gives me enough to do mourner surprise. So we'll copy the 
assassin. And I guess we can attack with ankle biter too, because we're gonna gain some life here anyway. Um, I guess they could attack Prairie Jog into Gardener. I'd be willing to trade. I feel like I have enough mana at this point, and I'm fine getting a Prairie Dog off the board. I could have left the Ankle Biter back for that reason, but that's okay. All right. Well, I have the Varmint actually to get Calamity back, so this could actually work out pretty well. Yeah. Um, surprise, get back Varmint, blow up Tether. I like it. Because we get a hasty dude back. Um, I guess they can kill Calamity, though. Can't they? Um, yeah, they actually can kill Calamity. And I could only kill one of their drakes? Oh, that is actually quite a bit worse, huh? Otherwise, no, I can... Yeah, that's actually pretty good. I like that. Um, are they tapped and attacking, though? Oh, it is... I see. It has to be tapped and attacking. Okay, so maybe we... Unfortunately, I think we have to wait on that. But I can pillage the bog here... I can still get in with Ankle Biter at least. I should have waited on that, but that's okay. We'll get in with Ankle Biter. We're going to pillage now and ideally just find our crazy mythic dude like we did last time. Um, we didn't. I could do Dance of the Tumbleweeds or I could do a removal. Um, I feel like Dance of the Tumbleweeds is probably the best just because we're going to get a huge fatty out of it. It's probably worth it. It doesn't have trample or anything, right? No, but that's okay. We didn't find our bomb. I could do removal instead, but I like getting huge dude here. Um, especially with Calamity. That's pretty good. Yeah, trading Calamity for a uh, Geyser Drake is not... Not optimal, I don't think. So we have both our deserts, so I can't deal one more damage to them with the dance. But we can end up with a 7-7 seven, seven that's copied twice with Calamity. Plus, I can buff the Calamity. And I'm much more willing to attack with Calamity. Well, I was going to say I'm, I was much more <laughs> willing to attack with Calamity for that reason. But, um, I mean, I have Clear Shot as well now up. Although, they have a bunch of spells they can pay less for, huh? Let's just do Dance. And do both modes here, pay our six. All right, so they get a two, two out of it. Um, can still attack with Ankle Biter. Can actually attack with Rooftop Assassin. That that seems a bit better. Um, they could block with the two two, I guess, huh? Well, thankfully they didn't. I don't know how they didn't. I mean, I missed it, but they shouldn't have missed that they could have just blocked with their 2 2 flyer. I'm not highlighting their 2 2 flyer because I don't want to. I don't want to highlight that. 
Although now, since it's already dead, I can. But yeah, they could have just blocked with that instead. Could have attacked the Ankle Biter, but I kind of want to keep Prairie Dog at bay in case they have a way to deal with Calamity here. And I'm that much deeper towards my 5-5 five five huge plot trampler, dude. So I'm kind of okay in that respect. Giant Beaver still seems pretty good here too. So they plotted something. If you control five or more untapped lands, it enters with and a life link counter. Okay. Well, Hollow Marauder, that's a good one. Let's do that. Let's see if this one, no counter. Oh, they're in trouble now. So target, we're gonna make them discard their hand. Yeah, they're they're actually in trouble now. They're in big trouble. So they did actually discard thing here. Um, I don't know if pumping the Calamity actually helps that much, so I might just pump maybe Ankle Biter. It's a little awkward, but... Two more Marauders, discard their hand, we draw two cards. Still works for me. Trade. Well, there. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work out too great for him. Well, I guess they, you know, they do actually they get rid of our death toucher like this. But we did draw extra lands, which is nice. And I have clear shot. And I still have my hollow marauder, so I think we're actually fine. Because they're at four life, yeah. Alright, so then we just pass. We lose our dudes. They go, they probably play their plotted dude, and then I kill their geyser drake, is my plan. Oh, it's got flying, huh? So kill dust animus. Oh, wait. I didn't even realize it buffs too. Wow, that's super strong. I could have done that as a, that's crazy actually. I didn't even realize that. That, that could have been way better. Um, that's okay. Uh, what we do now is, can Mercenary the Gardener and attack, and then play Beaver. And uh, next turn, saddle with Marauder, so then it gets buffed here. And I get in for four Vigilance. So I buff Beaver, saddle it with Marauder, buff Marauder.
<laughs> I guess. So if I had attacked, I mean, it worked out okay, actually. Yeah, and then of course we just rip a brawler. Um, could attack with both. I don't know if there's any good reason to do that. If they have a removal from Rotter, I'm going to end up losing my mercenary. So just in case they have some life gain, I guess I'll buff the Marauder or some sort of combat trick here. Oh, that's funny. So Marauder costs one mana. Yeah, this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't need to show them GTA. All right. So, playing against like a blue white uh, two spells a turn style deck, obviously, blowing up enchantment paid off huge there, blowing up mystical tether. Um, They've got some good value stuff though. And then they've got a lot of like attack. So they've got a lot of like attack kill your thing cards. Uh, I don't know if I have a lot of ways to do anything about that, unfortunately. Because I don't have buff spells. I don't have protection spells. So that's just kind of a problem, but that's okay. I think our death touchers actually look kind of good. Phantom Interference, unfortunately, is quite good against us. Extra two mana when you're trying to jam some expensive stuff is a little bit worse, but... How many creature cards did I have in my graveyard at the end of that game? One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, that went late. Could have had six uh, two ones with Rise of the Varmints. Um, just something to consider. Could dump, like, the Sentinel for that reason. Brings my creature count down low enough, though, where Rise of the Varmints gets even worse. So I don't know if that's a good idea. Reanimate, I'm sure there were some good targets. Getting their Dust Animus, getting Guess Lone Shark. Getting Calamity, obviously. Even reanimating a Rooftop Assassin post-combat to kill an additional thing is kind of cool. But I have a feeling we're probably going to still want some value out of reanimate here um i guess we run it back i think we're not necessarily optimized against some of the stuff they're doing but we're gonna try it again yeah we can keep this this hand's actually fine gardener to gain some life and then fix us rooftop assassin at some point maybe And of course, just rip a, a brawler. And even if they deal with it, we've got the mortar surprise. I guess if they exile it, that's a problem, but that's okay. One four. And bigger if you committed a crime. Well, that's pretty good. So we've got a turn four brawler. Tough to go wrong there. I mean, we may want to actually plot the, uh, the brawler here. And the reason that I want to plot the brawler... They see it coming if you plot. It doesn't exile it face down. But it would allow me to pay for a miscalc. And then I can cast it plus an assassin. And that's that's pretty good. I'm going to take it. There's no reason for them not to attack there. But I'm just going to play it cautious here. So I could... Now I guess I can... No, they can still counter it. They can still counter it. So I'm going to actually... I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm going to play Jitte first, and then I'm going to plot Brawler. Because that way, I can play Brawler, and they'll have to have a hard counter in order to deal with it. 
This plays around their miscalc, because like I said, with the Geyser Drake, they paid one less for it. Now if they counter Brawler, I can still get it back with Mourner Surprise, which is nice. I have GTA, that's nice. Um, so I've got I've got some good options here. Actually, what's really nice is I can do I can do Brawler. Yeah, it's actually really nice. Because I can do Brawler. See if they have the hard counter. They don't. So now I can do Assassin and I can still pay for a miscalc, which is really good. Now I've got 4 4 Lifelinker as well. Um, best use of mana. Well, I can pillage the bog now and find Calamity, but I can't actually cast Calamity. So I don't know if that's great. I can equip Jite to Gardener and attack, but then I lose out on red mana. I can also just equip Jite to Assassin, and that might actually just be fine. They do have the 4-5. Lifelink Flyer. Lone Shark. So get another card. And Marauder here, so... Um, I guess I can pillage, find a removal for Dust Animus. Let's do that. Yeah, because I have Deserts, do, but that's... I mean, it's it might still be enough. I don't have any Deserts currently, though. But it would give it Neg 2, so that's probably probably fine. They could double block though, but yeah, double block would actually be a problem. Hmm, this is a little trickier than I wanted. Can do the varmint, that doesn't do that much here. Yeah, surprisingly with top 12, I wasn't able to find as crazy of things as I wanted here. Um, I think what I'm actually gonna do is beaver. Leave it to Beaver, so I have five mana remaining. I can play the Beaver, so I can even equip Jite, play the Beaver, equip Jite, attack with Brawler, because I can get it back with more surprise, but we want to play Beaver first, obviously, to just get a huge dude here. And then we can equip Jite on Brawler and attack. And because I have the Mourner's Surprise, I'm actually kind of okay with this. So, I think we'll kill the Flyer. We have a charge counter on GTA now too. I can play Marauder for a cheaper price, but next turn I can just go Surprise plus Brawler. No Vigilance, right? Okay, that's all right then. They don't have vigilance, I'm okay with it. So we'll get our seventh land. So, can equip. I 
think they probably have a way to kill that, but we're just gonna allow it here. Good. Now we do surprise. Get Brawler back. Cast Brawler. Although, yeah, let's cast it now. They could have an out for it, but I'm okay with that. Alright, so they have the out to the Brawler, unfortunately. Which means I could have plotted it instead, but we still have the Rooftop Assassin, so that's okay. I still have a way to blow up Tether as well. We're just getting into everything, huh? Alright. Well, if they have another if they have an answer for assassin, I guess we're in a pretty rocky spot here. Get in. So four, seven, eight. I can cast both of these, I'm pretty sure, if I untap lands, right? Seven, yeah, I'm too short. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cast Marauder. Make them discard. Um, untap two lands and play the beaver. I'm at 11. I'm still okay. I guess I should have plotted the 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, that probably would have been better. Because then I could have cast two creatures and buffed them both. Take that. Yeah, I was gonna say we can take that. All right, that's okay. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Did I have a way to kill him that turn? I'm not sure if I did. I don't I don't think I did. Um, wow, that was crazy. All right, we'll see you for round three. Uh, no green mana, but I kind of feel like keeping this hand. I think I will. I guess it's pretty awkward with the overwhelming forces, but hopefully this Sentinel can hold down the fort well for me here. Might need to use it to cash out some lands, unfortunately. But we'll see what we gotta do. Gotta do what we gotta do. Ooh, that card's great. Little ramper. Hey, there's our green mana. So don't need to pillage the bog yet. So then we at least get to go sentinel on the beaver, which is pretty slick. And build towards a better bog. I mean, really, ultimately, bog is just here to find our uh, either calamity or our five mana. 
whatever the five mana five five dirty card is. Railway Brawler, just filthy mythic. Did we get past that? There's no way we got past that card, right? I feel like we did, but that just seems so ludicrous. Uh-oh. Oh, oh alright. Oh. Why didn't they attack? They got a one drop too, or ooh, a little plotter, huh? Alright, well the the good news is that uh I really like how Sentinel looks here. Little stopper force. They're they're doing some big ramping too though. At least if we can live long enough, maybe this overwhelming force should do it, but getting to eight mana is no easy feat. Alright. I'm okay with that. Still have a blocker for it. They just got all the ramp. Ah, I see. No haste though. But menace and trample. Just pretty good. All right, so I could do the beaver. It actually allows me. Well, it does allow me to block the summoner. Otherwise, if I do dance of the tumbleweeds now, what does that do for me? Dance of the tumbleweeds lets me get to. It doesn't really do that much. I think I'm more willing to just, especially since they have one card left, double block the summoner, and hope they don't have a combat trick. If they do, we're in some trouble. But. <laughs> oh, okay. Just lets you kill multiple creatures, huh? Well, oh. well, ankle biter's pretty good here, but um, might need to pillage the bog first, huh? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I still would not be able to do that next turn. So obviously I need ankle biter, but how did they get the three one? It's when it attacks. Oh, it's only when it attacks. I see. Um, is it tapped in attacking too? They have Exaxi's lethal next turn too. I can do this, and I can make a five five, but. I don't know if that's good enough either. I think we have to pillage, actually. We did get the brawler, but I need... Yeah, desert stew. There you go. So I can at least buy a little more time here. Otherwise, I can do another ankle biter, too. But I think we do desert stew because I can cast it now. And I do have a desert, which is nice. So I can do the ankle biter, leave up desert stew. I don't know if this is good enough though. It probably isn't. Oof. I don't know if I... I don't think there's any getting out of this one. Turns out 8 mana was too slow for this one. But I'm gonna just hope they don't... Uh, Attack with everything, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the funny thing is, I still don't even have enough lands, but um, pretty sure they have lethal air. We'll see. All right. A little bit too short on the overwhelming forces. Could do the caught in the crossfire. They probably were rocking quite a few outlaws there. Warlock's not an outlaw. These are though. Uh, Scout's not. But blowing up all that's probably worth it. So let's bring that in. Is ankle biter still good? I th think it is. 
Consuming Ashes could have dealt with their summoner, so I guess that's good. Double red's not going to be easy, but. It's probably still worth it. Um, reanimate. Could dump the reanimate, I guess. Uh, Would have been okay there, I guess. I mean, reanimate's a pretty strong card. Is it better than Mourner Surprise? Probably in most instances, I would guess. I don't know if I can afford to take the damage from Reanimate, though. Alright, let's cut the Reanimate. Yeah, that's good. We get to go Barons. I guess we can play turn two Gta. Turn three, the Dance of the Tumbleweeds, Ramp, Sentinel Equip. For like a decent blocker. <laughs> More all the overwhelming, huh? That's alright. You got the double red, that's the good news. What does this do? Saddled. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Let's just get the dance of the tumbleweeds out of the way here. And I guess we can get, let's see. I've got two red already, got black. I have two black, so we need the second green, I guess. Oh wait, so then we want the gulch instead. Yeah, that makes more sense. So the next turn we can go Biter, Sentinel, equipped with GTA. Ooh, what does this do? Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, Warner Surprise, okay. So let's go Sentinel, Ankle Biter, and Moss GTA on the Biter. And we'll pass. And if they have removal for ankle biter, at least we can more surprise replay it and still equip it with GTA. Which is not the worst. Might need to start actually cashing out lands with Sentinel just to make my land drops. Because I don't mind using treasure to cast overwhelming forces at a certain point here. If I have to. Any target. It's pretty good, actually. Can blow up my ankle biter with that. They just need a treasure. Beautiful. That worked out really well for him. They basically get to make it every turn. Wow. Tough one. Um, so I guess I can do dance and get a 5-5. Five, five. Fortunately, I think I need to. I guess they could have just attacked with Jolene and blew it up. They even did it the hard way and still got it. That's funny. <laughs> they like just, that's hilarious actually. They just were like, you know what? I'm going to hit a creature. <laughs> I don't I'm not even going to attack with Jolene. I'm just going to attack with the, I guess it makes sense. They didn't want to deal with the Sentinel, but they had to hit a creature in order to kill my, my dude there.
Hmm. Alright, land's good. Um, ankle biter really doesn't do much here though, so we're gonna just equip GTA and then pass. And hopefully Sentinel lives. We gotta start sacking land so we can make our land drops here. Wow, that's pretty sweet. Do they have haze too or something? Or they're just doing it to get some more self mill? That makes sense. So why do they get to attack with the Borrow Fiend? I'm a little confused. It gets haste too? Fiend Trample and haste. Wow. Seems pretty good. Well, I guess I'll block here. And sack a land. Okay, so we go land, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yep, thankfully enough. cool um All right, we'll take it. Going to game three. Hey, got the overwhelming force there. What more can you ask for? GTA, GTA ramp, baby. Uh, I mean, it's a tough match. Their deck's amazing. <laughs> they're, they're drawing hot right now, too. I mean, granted, uh, we were just one overwhelming force away from... I mean, I don't know how often you get the overwhelming force surprise. Maybe they'll play around it now. That would be good. But... Uh, would I would reanimate have been better there? I would have been able to survive reanimate, um, but I don't know. Getting yeah, they have so many good creatures to reanimate. That's actually true. We're we're getting reanimate back. I want to get their creatures, especially if they're doing like crazy self mill stuff too. They have like some seriously strong creatures to get. Yeah, really good ones. Um, all right. They fall for it once, but do they fall for it again? Like I said, playing around is not always like an option either. You have to remember that. I think caught in the crossfire still would have been a good draw. Could have killed a bunch of mercenaries. Or non-mercenaries, as it were. Scouts and such. They actually have a reasonable split between those two, but... This hand's kind of awkward, to be honest. Two black spells. 
I still feel like keeping it, but it is awkward. We have just a lot of ramp to draw. We got our black mana, so that's good. And we have our double red too, so caught in the crossfire might might just be all we need here. And then four, I can deal it to all, huh? All right, well, that's good. I don't think we need to do bog just yet. All right, well, that one's pretty strong. Okay. They might play out their hand and let me caught in the crossfire for four and kill everything, so I guess I just need to be still patient here. So, I don't think a scout does it. Uh oh. Yeah. All right. Guess it could be worse. How many mounts do they have? I think just one. I guess I'm unsure why this, why did it get the additional plus one, plus one, oh, because it's a mount. I'm like, where is it getting it? But that actually makes sense. All right. So caught in the crossfire, not looking as good now. Um. And kill two of their dudes. They're still left with some big flyers I need to deal with. Another option is pillage the bog. What does that do for me? I think we just are going to end up doing a caught in the crossfire here. And hope they play one to two more things I can kill. They haven't seen caught in the crossfire. I guess that's the good news. Bad news is I'm I'm really not dealing with nothing here. Jeez. Now I guess the play is ankle biter plus rooftop assassin. Oh, sad. Oh, they don't have red mana. Well, I guess that's good. Oh, wait. They do have red mana, but they can't sack a treasure. Got it. Got it. Well, that buys me one turn. Let's uh, pillage first. Let's see. I mean, I can get the Stampede. Marauder right now is how much cheaper? Just two cheaper. I mean, I have all my good cards. Problem is, I don't have double black to kill with Consuming Ashes. I need to play Gardener here. like I guess because I'm gonna go to one so I need to deal with basically both of their dudes 
I wonder if it has to be like Marauder, maybe? That's a tough one. I'm just thinking the Marauder is at least like a blocker, but I don't know what I could draw to get me out of this regardless. Digging through their graveyard, that's a bad sign. Gonna resurrect a couple things. Alright. Alright. Well, they got us, but we ended up going 2 1. This deck was sweet. Let's do some pack one pick ones. Pack one, pick one. What's this do? Two mana, two, two. When it attacks, reveal the top card of your library, put it in your hand. Lose life equal that card's mana value if it isn't saddled. Otherwise, each opponent loses that much life. Wow, that's cool. That's insane. <laughs> you just saddle it, you get to extra cards, and they potentially lose that much life. Otherwise, you still get the card and you lose life. Wow, that's really fun. Uh, Thornado, that's a that's a cool card. I don't remember that one. Cactarantula, I love because Reach is so good. Unfortunate Accident was super playable too, but that's an easy Bronco. Wow, that's a fun card. Good mount. Um, this one, oh yeah, this is a fun one. Wait, this isn't what I thought it was. Each opponent lose one life. You gain one life, draw a card. When you commit a crime, you can return it to your hand. I see. So you can like keep playing it over and over again. That's a fun card, actually. That is good. If you have enough targeting stuff, that's that's pretty awesome. I could see possibly taking that. I like this because you get two bodies in one. That's pretty much always good. Um, Raven of Fell Omens is certainly playable. I still like the idea of Take for a Ride with committing crimes, stealing their stuff, and blocking all with their other stuff. That's really strong. But I probably... Well, it is a, it's a gold card. You usually don't want to start with a gold card. That's true. I could see t doing the Take for a Ride just because the potential upside of that is actually very, very significant. Plus, there's so many powerful creatures, even if you're not getting the full upside. You're probably still happy. I imagine I'm taking this. 3 mana, 2, 4, scry 2. When it attacks while saddled, at end of combat, exile it and up to one creature that saddled it this turn. Then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. Exile it and up to one creature that saddled it and then return them. Okay, so you get to at least scry 2 again. And then potentially what other, in other enter the battlefield effects you get. I've seen this make your own luck. This card is sweet. Look at the top 3, exile and non-land. If you do, it becomes plotted. So you basically look at top three and get to essentially play it for free the next turn, which is pretty nice if you have some big fat fatties. And Lazav is pretty awesome too, actually. But I'll, I'll take, I'd take Fortune there. It's monocolor. It's great effect. Take it early. You can build around a little bit, get some good into the battlefield stuff. I actually like Smuggler's Surprise. It's very versatile. I mean, two creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield, I imagine, is the one you're going to do the least. But when you're milling for getting the creatures, if you're paying the full price, which is, what, nine mana? Five, six, seven, eight, nine? Yeah. Nine mana is a lot. But you get your best two creatures back and then get to put them on the battlefield. I wish I gave haste two instead of the hexproof and indestructible. That would be cooler with putting them on the battlefield, but that's okay. Um, do I want to take small gift surprise? What's getaway glamour do? Exile a non-token creature, return it to the battle. All right, so this just... Like flickers, if no other creature has greater power. All right, so blow up the biggest, greater, greatest power creature, basically. And then flicker something, too, if you want. That's actually kind of good. I like Ambush Gigapede. I like Explosive Derailment. That's a good common, good versatility there. Um, but I could see taking the, well, I guess you really like the gigapede this was going late but this card this effect is strong flash six mana six power blocker that can also just kill something else this is potential built-in two for one for six mana that happens to also be a beater but it is a common um surprise versus getaway glamour probably and i guess i'd take the surprise i i kind of like this it's only from among the milled cards, though. You don't get any two cards from your graveyard. That's actually relevant. could see that being 
an issue, but I'm interested in the rares and trying them out. That does seem like a lot of fun things. All right. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you for the next one.